If you hate writing essays, but you want easy A's, I'm gonna show you how to get them. I have taught college level writing in many capacities, but even more importantly than that, I know how lazy college professors think. So if you watch this video, you're gonna find that the essay writing becomes easier and that your grades go up. And if you want help earning college credit quickly and inexpensively with fewer essays, sign up for a consultation with me and my team at the link in the description and we will help you do that so you can build a career that you love. When professors grade essays, they look for four things good ideas, good grammar, and good formatting. And that's where most professors think they stop grading. After all, if an essay has those three things, it's good to go, right? Wrong. Number four is called signposting, and if you don't have it in your paper, you are screwed. I'll explain. Basically, thinking is actually hard work, and thinking is to the brain what running is to the legs. And if that's the case, then grading essays is like running a marathon at a full sprint, Plus, it's super boring. And the brain, like the body, has an instinct to avoid hard work because it wants to save those precious calories for, like, running away from a saber-toothed tiger or something. So when your professor sits down to grade 37 page essays over the course of like two or three days, their brain says, hey, dude, this is really stupid. We're not getting food, we're not getting shelter, we're not getting dopamine out of this, also I'm bored. And this is where signposting comes in because essentially signposting is about making it really easy for your professor's brain to see that you have done what you're supposed to do. This has all been super theoretical, so let me show you an example. The audacity of such a presupposition could lead to a major misunderstanding about the collegiate principles that need to be respected in the case of credit-bearing educational attempts. If one is too generous in one's assigning of credentials in case of transfer evaluations, it could lead to a questioning of reputation and even overall harm to an institution. The long-term effects could be damaging to both students and faculty in the learning economy we operate within. Was that painful to read or what? If you had to grade 210 pages like that every week, you'd be grumpy too. Now let's take a look at a better one. Transfer credit flexibility is useful, but schools need to have careful standards. If colleges accept every transfer credit they receive, it could be a sign that the college has too low of standards. In the long term, this could mean the school loses accreditation or reputation, but a college can protect their degrees with well-reasoned standards. If you were grading a paper that sounded like the first paragraph and then a paper that sounded like the second paragraph, which one would you enjoy reading more? Which one would you give a better grade to? The information is the exact same and the grammar is flawless in both, but you have to admit that the other one is better, if only because you can understand it more easily. And there are five strategies I wanna show you so that you can go do the same for yourself. Number one, using keywords frequently. Notice the words that keep showing up here. We've got credit, we've got colleges, we've got standards, we've got credit, colleges, standards, we have transfer, we have transfer. What do you think this paragraph is about? If you only knew those keywords that keep popping up, then you would know that this is about college's standards for transfer credits. And number two, we put those keywords in prominent places. Look at this very first sentence where we mention almost all of these keywords, transfer, credit, schools, AKA colleges, and standards. But even the very first words of the sentence, transfer credit, that's what this paragraph is about. And both of those strategies are used to make it really easy for your professor's subconscious to know that you are writing about the correct topic. Third, the words are much simpler in the second paragraph. Look at this first one. The audacity of such a presupposition could lead to a major understanding about the collegiate principles, et cetera, et cetera. So boring. And number four, beyond that, you've got super long sentences. Like that sentence is two lines long. This one's almost two lines long. And then the other one's like a line and almost a half. Whereas down here we have one line, we have one plus a couple words, less than one, and less than one. And fifth, notice the lengths of the paragraphs. This paragraph, the first one, is almost five lines long, and this one is like three and a half. You don't need to use more words to get your point across. Less is almost always more. And here's a dirty secret, guys. You probably already guessed it. Professors, most of them, skim papers when they're grading them. They don't have time to read every single word, and so they're looking for key ideas. If you can get rid of the fluff and make the really important stuff very prominent, you are proving to your professor's subconscious as they skim 
that you did a good job. But if you're making the paragraph difficult to read or difficult to see the main ideas or to see that the main ideas are there, then your professor's subconscious is getting frustrated. When you signpost, you help a frustrated, bored, and tired brain make easy sense of your paper. That makes your papers easy to read. The brain thinks that easy is good. Good translates to good grades. I hope that's helpful. Of course, it's not enough just to know how to pass a course. You also have to know which ones to take. So if you want help planning how to hack your college degree, sign up at the link in the description for a consult with me or my team. We often help people graduate $45,000 under budget and two to three years quicker with just a 45 minute consultation. We hope we're able to help you. We hope that this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and happy hacking.